desire your housing project, which is like five and a half miles away from our housing project. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I can't necessarily explain to you what took place in the desire, but a life was taken. Okay, mm -hmm. in that situation, the life that was taken, they give it the uh, charge to me and my two co-defendants. Wow. Mm. Saying that we committed the crime and all. Uh, but you weren't there. At all. In fact, we was on the back of a cop car. We uh, thank God we got stopped in the traffic stop. Right. During the um, proceedings of this murder, if it wasn't for the proceedings of this murder, uh, I mean us being in a traffic stop during the proceedings of this murder, I probably wouldn't be talking to y'all today. Yeah, we on boss talk one on one. Yeah, we gonna talk. But so tell me about a time, because I know you. The first time you got in trouble, how old were you? Well, really, I was the, the first time I got in trouble. Well, my first juvenile, Joseph, I was 13. 13? 13, yeah. But uh, I had a couple of... And what happened at 13? Uh, I stole the vehicle and a uh, pistol. Pistol mm -hmm. inside. Just basically John riding. You know, okay. Riding, uh, got Did you finish high school? No, no, no. I was... Uh, by the time I was released from Scotland, the juvenile jail. I was... I mean, it wasn't too long before I was right back in on this adult charge for something that uh, I had no idea. And how old were you when you went in for this adult charge? 17. 17, and tell me what happened. Oh, uh, Literally, we was in an altercation in my neighborhood, which is the Ironfield Housing Project. We had an altercation in that neighborhood at a uh, DJ with some um, neighborhood friends or whatever. And um, during the, uh, while this was taking place, something else was taking place in the Desire Housing Project, which is like five and a half miles away from our housing project. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I can't necessarily explain to you what took place in the Desire, but a life was taken. Okay, mm -hmm. in that situation, the life that was taken, they give it the uh, charge to me and my two co-defendants. Wow. Mm. Saying that we committed the crime and all. Uh, but you weren't there. At all, in fact, we was on the back of a cop car we, uh, thank God we got stopped in the traffic stop. Right. During the um, proceedings of this murder, if it wasn't for the proceedings of this murder, uh, I mean, us being in a traffic stop during the proceedings of this murder, I probably wouldn't be talking to y'all today. Yeah, uh, because then if it was, it's a law enforcement officer who was there, so they can't say he's lying to help you. If it was a friend, it'd be like, well, he lying, he, you know how they be doing. Well, we did have an officer that all that actually made the traffic stop he literally told him that our traffic stop was in, intentionally a traffic stop. Oh. And it didn't have anything to do with a murder. Okay. But they had officers in the 5th District that were saying that we was actually assailants involved in a crime five and a half miles away. And the time, okay, so what time did the stop happen and what time did that crime happen? Okay, well, the crime happened at nine, like exactly like 922. That was when the first calls came in about the crime, shots being fired, okay? Uh, and then your stop happened at what time? No later than 90, 927, 930, we was in a traffic stop. Yeah, you and couldn't make stopped. it that far and that and miles, yeah, in and that yes. short of a time. Okay, uh, our name was being, uh, well, one of my co defendants name was being broadcast over the radio while we was in the traffic stop. And they were saying that we was fleeing from a scene in the Desire Housing Project headed towards the interstate. So was it somebody that looked like y'all, that they saw that they no, thought it was y'all? No, 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 no. This was- uh, Cause I'm like, why not, did they, where did they get y'all's name from? That's, this was not a mistaken identity. This wasn't, this was- this, But this who told them the name? It was the cops. They just came up with y'all names? The cops literally give the names up to the actual victim who was in the car. Uh. And he actually mentioned our names to them. They have documents, this is public records. Do you know which police officer um, told him this name? Uh, Lynn Davis. Did he have something against y'all? Um, that's the part that I'm confused about. If yeah, because I'm like, if he had, had your name on the tip of his tongue like that. that. You know, yes, yes, so um, if it was, it was through something that was happening in the streets. Did you know him you know, personally? Not at all. Did you ever not have any run-in with him before? Not at all, not with him personally, not not that I could recall. I done had a few run-ins with cops, but uh, not that I could recall actually. Or your personally. or your friend, did your friend have any run-ins with him? Not that we can recall. Okay. Though. Yes, uh, by him working in the fifth district, and we are the first district, first district, we don't too much encounter fifth district cops. Mm -hmm. So for that situation to go like that, I mean, I don't know how it played out or how the narrative was drawn up. 
Yeah. But he was Because that's just crazy that yes. he just came up with, you know, y'all's name, picked y'all name, knew your names mm -hmm. to say. Yes. So uh, were there witnesses at yeah. that location? The thing about this is that the feds had the whole thing tapped. Okay. The whole time. This was. Where the shooting was. Yeah, the whole okay. thing, everything. It was under the federal investigation for Operation Shadow Shield, which they was investigating a lot of crooked cops mm -hmm. that was working under the branch of uh, Lynn Davis or whatnot. And um, they actually had everything on record. They actually knew that we didn't commit the crime. But, but that had film, I'm footage, about, no, or I just I really don't know voice. if they had footage, footage, but I know they had audio for sure. Okay. I know they had audio or uh, maybe a few things from their cell phones, because this is how they used to communicate. Right. The phones was given to them by the feds, and they did, literally didn't know that they had phones from the feds at the time. Mm. So this is how the, a lot of the information was being tapped. Wow. Okay. So <clears throat> this was highly publicized. Mm -hmm. uh, Soldier Slim mentions it in a song, uh, it mentioned you guys in a song. Mm -hmm. How does, uh, where, what time period was this? Well, Soldier Slim, uh, I ran into Soldier Slim probably maybe around 96. Uh, he was incarcerated with me in Orleans Parish. We was incarcerated for this charge in 94. So we actually come through on the charge while we was on the already. Wow. So, uh, how was he? Just, uh, just dealing with him. Oh, slim, 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 straight, bro. You know what I mean? I know a lot of people say this, that, and that. All you know, the street gangster shit. He's a good dude, bro. Literally, he's a good guy. He just, he just firm, bro. He gonna stand firm on what he believe in, you know. Yeah, we on boss talk one on one. Yeah, we gonna talk.